for yes. like a second though? I want to be in the video. Okay, well let me let me cue things up so you can be in the video. Okay. You're gonna have to come up here, Borley. You can't sit on my sh Borley! Come back. Come back. Come here. I have to use you for Borley, you have to come close. You have to I don't know what's happening. Borley, you have to come closer. <clears throat> Hello. Do you want to tell them what happened? I am on TV. Do you want to tell everybody why we're filming like this? Well, there was an accident. What was the accident, Borley? There was no audio on the original video. Oh. It did not record. Why didn't it record? Um, I don't know. I am not guilty, though. Is it because I'm a... Like, I can't swear in the first, like, couple minutes of the video. Is it because I'm a, f a freaking idiot? Um, well, Mother, I didn't say that. For the record, I didn't say that. But it's true. No, Mother, it was just an accident. It was just an accident. Mother. She wants to leave. No, I'm okay here. I'm happy here. Do you want to leave poorly? No, I'm going to stay here. I'm okay. so excited to see our friends tonight. You're not coming. I'm so excited to come to dinner. And see You're not coming tonight. to the bar. I want to come to the bar. I would put on an outfit. You hate wearing clothes. I love clothes. That's why I'm going to wear your shorts. Okay, she's sitting on my shorts. That's why. Well, let's see if this has any audio. Let's see. Folks, I've returned. For how long? I can't say. But for the time being, Yes. I'm back to window shop on Cider because it's showing no signs of stopping as being the new it fast fashion site of the current generation. And I believe it would do well to get some of the Nisi Pisa treatment of being really mean about it and not really offering any constructive solutions. So if I seem curt in this video, it's because I actually just finished recording this entire thing and the input volume on my computer was a little bit too low. So actually, none of the audio was recorded. <laughs> Absolutely none of it. Are you kidding me? I'm literally furious. Let's get into it. We're gonna start here with this tweed check corset mini dress with mini balls. Mini balls? Do you mean these buttons? <laughs> Cause you can just call them faux buttons. I don't know that calling them mini balls really does anything for anybody. If you're gonna be that specific about things, why even call this a mini dress? Why not call it a short bolt of cylindrical fabric? This is 100% Samantha from the American Girl Dolls cosplay. And I mean that without an absolute drop of vitriol. I think that that's awesome. Oh yeah, come on. Like this is so teenage Samantha and I love it. Samantha was my favorite doll. I had her and I had Addie, and I liked Samantha's plaid dress because when I was a little kid, I loved plaid. This is the Curvin Plus striped, distressed, fuzzy, bell sleeve knitted top, and I was really struck by this because it's like ugly, but it's not ugly, ugly. It's the kind of thing you would wear and your mom would be like, okay, um, we are going to the stockyard though. Do you have something nice that you can wear. The stockyard is like a mid-level restaurant in the town I grew up in here in Massachusetts. We're gonna talk about Massachusetts a little bit later. This kind of looks like if Oscar the Grouch from Sesame Street had a teenage child and that child was going through an emo phase. Wait a second. Three pairs mushroom pattern socks, mushroom patchy v-neck cardigan sweater, mushroom middle waist shorts. Why, this seems to me like the perfect outfit for <laughs> going to class at Mushroom College. I think these shorts are kind of adorable. I think these socks are like whatever. I'm not really a quirky sock person, but I think they're cute. This sweater, I have this weird issue with fast fashion websites kind of manufacturing this type of kitschy, found, grandmother made it for you, 70s ugly sweater on, but like it's too on purpose type of look. This is the type of sweater that you should find after spending hours rifling through a rack at Savers or Value Village. This is like something you happen upon. Buying a sweater that looks like this intentionally kind of feels like cheating. You don't get to buy your ugly sweaters. Ugly sweaters find you and choose you like stray cats. This is the old money aesthetic shop on Cider. Cider has all these different aesthetic shops. Dopamine dressing, 
70s retro cottagecore dark academia old money aesthetic is dressing like someone whose family probably owned other people really something to aspire to? Follow-up question based off of this off-the-shoulder bodycon crop sweater. Guys, are we... Is this really old money? At what point does the pursuit of quote unquote old money aesthetic just become 80s rich lady cosplay? Old money people in the present day don't dress like this. They dress like king princess. And by that I mean they dress like everyone who I went to Sarah Lawrence with. You couldn't wear this to a country club. If you wore something with buttons this askew to a country club, they would laugh you out of there and then buy you. I've never been to a country club. I'm scared of them. All of these outfits look kind of like you let someone who just got their first Singer sewing machine for their birthday loose in my grandmother's closet, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Ew. <laughs> I hate this. Let's have a conversation. This is the Curvin Plus Knit Contrast Binding Belted Mini Dress. The, the Curvin, the Curvin Plus Knit Contrast Binding Belted Midi Dress. Binding belted, girl, we don't need that much alliteration at 3.30 in the afternoon, please. What am I, in sixth grade, learning in a, in, in a poetry unit? Am I, am I reading Robert Frost right now, binding belted? Do I have to write an acrostic poem for homework? I'm gonna start this off by saying, I love this model's makeup. I love this plum lip with a little Kate Moss tooth gap in the blush. She looks adorable if white, just look at her face. Also, I gotta give Cider props. The shoe game is gonna get a little problematic the longer into this video we go, but I like these boots. So some Nisi piece of lore that I don't think I've gone into detail here in this series about is I hate sweater dresses. I, you know what, let me qualify that. I hate long belted cardigans that look like dresses. And here's why, there's a reason for this. I, I'm not just like this, something made me into being like this. When I was in middle school, my computer teacher, because I'm old enough to have had a computer class. Actually, I don't know if kids today don't have computer classes. Uh, when I worked at a middle school a couple years ago, they had a coding class, but my computer class was more like, if you put quotes around what you're searching in Google, it'll show you things with that exact phrase in it. And you know what? You know what was nice about that computer class is that I learned how to turn off safe search in it. And um, I never ever utilized that skill. As someone who was 13 years old in 2007, learning how to turn off Google safe search did not lead me anywhere. I never ever hopped on the opportunity to try that out. And I didn't see anything online that has laser cut itself into my brain matter as a result of that happening. Everything was fine. I just learned that and I went right back to playing Neopets every single day and nothing went wrong. When I was in middle school, my computer teacher, Miss Green, love her, lovely lady, roped me into entering this essay contest and I did well enough in the contest that I was invited to the awards banquet. And it was being held at this hotel in like the middle of goddamn nowhere, like North East Westboro, Hamptonshire, Massachusetts, somewhere like that. You know, it's like, how many English towns is this one place named after at the same time? And I was wearing this god awful white ribbed zip up long cardigan with lace panels up the side and super bright Burt's Bees champagne frosty lip gloss. I looked like, and I mean no hate to my younger self when I say this, it's just true. I looked like if you rolled a paper towel roll in marshmallow fluff. That experience made me not the biggest fan of sweater dresses. This one in particular is just really cheesy, I feel. I think it's goofy looking, I'm sorry. It looks like a rich lady themed bathrobe, especially when we look at it without the model in it, without the accessorization, like, come on guys. This looks like if you were going to an arrested development themed slumber party and you wanted to dress like Lucille Bluth. Okay. Why? Curvin plus color goose graphic shirt. Okay, first of all, these are, objectively swans, right? These are swans. That's a swan. These are swans. Swans. Yeah, girl, cider. These are swans, first of all. These are little swans. These are baby swan boys. It's a great disguise if you ever wanna swing by your local pond, get waist deep in the water and steal a few cygnets without being detected. Cygnets, for those who don't know, are baby swans. They look like this, they're gray. <laughs> they're so cute. Baby swan on Esplanade rescued. Oh, after having difficulty swimming. Charlie McKenna, tell me all about it, please. Just one day after its mother passed away, one of the signets calling the Charles River Esplanade home had to be rescued by animal control officer after it had difficulty swimming. 
No, the baby swan has a net or fishing line around it and it's making it hard for the baby swan to swim. No, baby swan. Oh my God, I'm sad now. Well, you could wear this shirt to rescue baby swans having difficulty swimming. They just think that you're like their aunt or uncle or something approaching at the same time in grayscale for whatever reason. Goose swans, now they got me doing it. Swans might be colorblind, I don't know. Are swans colorblind? Or are they like lobsters where they can see like even more colors than we can? Whenever I hear stuff about how shrimps and lobsters can see more colors than we can, it's like, oh, okay. So the lobster wrote this article. The shrimp and the lobster are wearing lab coats and they're they're just telling you what they want you to publish about them. How do you, are you asking the shrimps? Of course they're gonna lie, they're shrimps. Mantis shrimp super color vision debunked. This is exactly what I said. The shrimps were lying to us the entire time. This is the Curvin Plus Crochet V-neck knitted cardigan. Um, right off the bat, cute little beret on the model. This sweater is really stupid looking and ugly and I don't like it. And I'm gonna say mean stuff about it. I'm also gonna say mean stuff about whoever decided to put this model in these pants. I don't like these pants. I. I don't hate baggy pants, I don't mind them, but sometimes I think it's like, okay, are you comfortable? Cause I know that's not sitting all the way up in your crotch. I know you're chub rubbing and chub rubbing in pants feels like the kind of torture you'd only find in certain circles of hell as described in Dante's Inferno. If I'm wearing bottoms, I shouldn't be chub rubbing. And I think I, I, would, I would make a presidential platform off of that one single thing and I would win. I can't run yet though, cause I'm not 35, cause I'm so young and spry and I'm a little baby quivering ingenue. <laughs> this sweater looks like someone pulled a Regina George on you and cut the boobs out of your pink and white cardigan and all you had to cover your nips was two granny squares from the quilt you're working on. <laughs> that you just slipped out of your little Brooklinen tote bag and slapped on your exposed nips so you wouldn't get arrested for indecent exposure at the farmer's market. You know what, actually that joke doesn't really work because look how high up these panels are. On the model, they're nearly by her shoulders. My nips wouldn't be anywhere near there. My boobs are so saggy. How saggy are they? <laughs> <laughs> my boobs are so saggy that my stylist tried to part them the last time I got box braids. I don't feel good about that. I don't feel good that I said that. <laughs> what a horrible mental image. I gotta be nicer to myself. <laughs> uh, anyway. Jesus Christ. I commend Cider for styling this model in a way that doesn't make this sweater look quite as balls to the wall stupid as I personally think it looks by itself. So, uh, brava. This is the Curvin Plus contrasting graphic oversized sweater. First of all, I do, I do have a crush on this model. I think she's beautiful. I'm not here to talk about her though. I'm here to talk about this sweater. Uh, what the hell? I hate this. I do. This little guy's face is spooky. Am I crazy? Is he not scary to anyone else? His frightening brain hair, his frozen expression of shock, if that's what we want to call it. I'm having a vision of drifting off to sleep and noticing the sweater hanging innocently in my closet. My eyes close for a second and when I open them again, the sweater has somehow moved from my closet to my desk chair. I close my eyes again. Opening them once more, I see a sleeve draped on the foot of my bed. I close them again, thinking it's just a trick of the light. Man, am I tired. But when I open them, all I see is darkness. The sweater is wrapping itself around my face and neck tighter and tighter until I succumb to my 28% nylon, 52% acrylic, 20% viscose fate. I don't like it. I think I, 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 I don't want to put too fine a point on it, but I do think that the sweater 
would gain sentience in the middle of the night and attack me if I bought it. I'm not cozying up to 28% nylon, 50% acrylic, 20% viscose. If I'm wearing an oversized sweater, I want it to be wool. I want it to be somebody's grandmother's grandmother's grandmother. I want to pull it out of a pile at Savers. I want to wash it and have my kitchen smell like wet wool for three days while I'm letting it dry. God, I had to write an essay in high school once in our computer room. And my mother and I had recently taken a trip to an alpaca farm and she bought a very expensive alpaca cardigan and she had washed it and it was drying on our drying rack in our computer room. And I was writing this very difficult essay with my brain and nose being accosted by wet wool smell. It was like doing homework in a, in a bar. It was like doing homework in, in the barn where Jesus was born, just like wet animal smell, you know? Sometimes I just like talk and I'm like, these are, do you know what you're saying? No. No. No, I don't. Thank you, Max. Thank you, Max. Yeah. Okay. Before we get into it, I know everyone's scared. I know everyone's shaking in their little boots right now. I have to tread is so lightly here because I know at least one of you watching this owns this dress and I don't want to make you sad. I like you guys. You guys say nice stuff about me and my hair and my room and whatever. This is like one of the most popular dresses that Cider sells. I feel like I see this on social media all the time. The girls love this dress and I'm not even gonna be that mean about it. I don't think it's ugly. That's the first thing. It's very committed to the aesthetic it's presenting, which a lot of clothing on cider is, and that's not a bad thing. Like the green colorway with the butterfly is, is so cute. I really like this. The thing about this one though, feels like it's teetering on the border between thematically committed dress and Ren Faire costume. And that is not a dig on Ren Fairs. I went to my very first Ren Fair in September and I had the time of my life, mostly because my literal singular goal of the day was getting one of those giant turkey legs. And I wound up being able to do that pretty much immediately upon entering the Ren Fair. So the rest of the day's happenings were just gravy. I saw a joust. I saw a bunch of people who know me from the internet. I bought some apple cinnamon honey. The day was very fun. There's a part of my brain that sees this dress and immediately thinks Shrek background character, which again, not bad, not a bad thing, great flick. It's just not what I imagine the average cider shopper is going for. But if you are going to a Ren Faire or alternatively, they're doing, you're gonna be in like Shrek the musical and you're gonna be a background character, it's 30 bucks, not that expensive. So, hey, you know, live your dreams and life. This is the floral bell sleeve corset midi dress. And you know what? I'm never gonna begrudge a turbo feminine moment. You know, I love the softness. I love the beautiful tones. It'd be so nice in like an editorial photo shoot in like a meadow or a flower garden or like a Rococo garden or perhaps a pond, something like that. Like it's cute. I love the soft hues. I love florals. I love this shade of blue. It's all fine with me. But all of this happening at once, this flouncy hem, these big bell sleeves, the off the shoulder, the straps, the florals, it's, you know, pardon my French, a little bit of an absurd mishmash of typically soft feminine design elements. She's very busy, you know, very complicated. I theorize that the reason this isn't being shown on a model and all these pictures are just the dress by itself is because the dressers at Cider, upon faced with the insurmountable challenge of picking accessories to go with this collection of choices, all had panic attacks and had to go home early. That's my theory. It kind of looks like what you'd wear to perform a figure skating routine set to Running Up That Hill by Kate Bush or Wuthering Heights by Kate Bush, or Linger by The Cranberries, or Kiss Me by Sixpence None the Richer, or As I Lay Me Down by Sophie B. Hawkins, or I Love You Always Forever by Donna Lewis, or Loving You by Minnie Riperton. I could keep going, but I kind of, I think you, I think you got the message. Actually, that's like, I'm like halfway done with the greatest soft girl kind of pensive lost in thought playlist ever. I, I need to like make that after I finish recording. I love As I Lay Me Down by Sophie B. Hawkins. That's one of my favorite songs ever. Every time I need to just like kind of like sit and have a moment with myself, I'm like, As I lay me down to sleep and I pray that you hold me dear. Such a beautiful song. Oh my God. 
I am an alto. This is the Curvin Plus turtleneck floral pattern zipper vest. Let's go back to outerwear for a second. This is a great vest if you want to dress like every woman over the age of 45 in the state of Vermont. Actually, if you have a child in the state of Vermont at the hospital, they give you one of these vests before they give you your baby back. And I have it on good authority that the vast majority of women in that example are more excited to get the vest than their baby. Why have we paired the vest with this outfit? These pants and boots? No. She looks like she had to go help her mom with the groceries and this vest was the closest outerwear near her. I know during these photo shoots, they're modeling like 60 outfits in a day. Like they're probably just like, oh, we gotta get this vest in, just throw it on top of the white long sleeve from the, you know, tan Colombo outfit we just had her in. But like, guys, let's like put a little effort into it. I know it's literally a vest. She has great eyebrows. Oh, I tried to zoom in and she turned into the vest. Oh my God, I hope she's okay. That sounds painful. This is the Curvin Plus faux fur collar faux shearling zip up crop jacket. I clicked on this in the original video because it reminded me of something. And I couldn't tell at the time what it reminded me of. And I was like, oh, I'll get to it later. And I've just realized what it's reminding me of. Webkin's dog man store. Yeah, this guy. The Webkin's dog man. <laughs> his name is Artifact. This is his jacket. If you buy this jacket, you're like halfway to a cosplay. That's so funny. You just have to like get a little Webkin's patch and like dog ears, I guess. I was never a Webkin's kid. I only know this from like cultural osmosis. I think like Brittany Broski has done Webkin's videos. I feel like Webkin's is one of the more salient young millennial old Gen Z dividing lines because kids who were even like a year and a half younger than me when I was a child were so into webkins and I just never, it just never gripped me and any of my friends. You know, it was just one of those online communities that like we weren't on. But you know what I was on? Let me tell you, I was, you guys remember Millsbury? Like the cereal company online platform, the General Mills one. This went so crazy. This grocery store with all the fucking <laughs> cereal. I was so good at that one mini game. It was like the Reese's Puffs ski jump, whatever. And you had to like do math for it. I had this long, like 30 inch bust down hairstyle. I looked so good. It was this one. It was this hairstyle my character had. My hair never looked like that day in my goddamn life, but my character did. Nobody had to know that in real life. Millsbury and Neopets, I was like, Jordan Belfort in those games, girl. I was like, the pursuit of money is all that matters. I was like a millionaire in Neopets. I was like, I'm gonna be so good at Neopets because I had a Shoryu, hold on. I had a Shoryu. This is my first little guy. It, and I had the blue one. And my account got hacked when I was a kid and over hacked my account, turned her into a different Neopet. Tiger. Yes, dude. I had one of these, a Kugra. Anyways, if you wanna dress like the Webkin's dog, Cider has a $30 jacket that you should probably look into buying. The Curvin Plus conversational long sleeve cardigan. First of all, this is like the worst collection of colors I've ever seen. I don't know why we're doing this like offshoot Kelly green, which is my least favorite color, I hate Kelly green, with swamp green, baby pink, and this like little periwinkle. It says pink grill. Love, love, pink grill, pink grill, shh, crush, 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 two, three, four, nothing compares to. You know why I hate Kelly Green? I hate how it looks. I hate it's like weird turquoisey root colors, but also because when I was a kid, I used to love this book series, Amber Brown. The first one is called Amber Brown is Not a Crayon. This girl's name is Amber Brown, so you can imagine the struggle she went through. And in one of the books, there's a new student whose name is Kelly Green and Amber Brown feels a type of way because now there's another girl in class whose name is a color. And I was like, you gotta fight her, Amber. I hate Kelly Green. You know what shade of green I like? I like forest green. This is the girl. I love forest green. You know what else I like? I love chartreuse. I think it is such a beautiful color. Hey guys, 
Who is this man? This whole thing that's like red should be chartreuse and green should be vermilion. You guys need to grow up. Sorry, is this a petition? Are you serious? 36 people have signed this petition? You guys all need hobbies. The English language has failed us, folks. Hey, Grace Scullion? I maybe wouldn't talk so much mess about the English language for someone whose last name is one letter away from being an onion. Grace, I'm sorry about that. I didn't mean to be so mean to you in public. As a famous person, I, I need to be more responsible about how I speak to people. Um, but Grace, you, you should take this petition down. It makes you look very silly. Stop this. This is so childish. <laughs> Any freaking way, ugly sweater. Thank you for your time. Let's talk about this Curve and Plus satin solid off-shoulder mini dress. This is a great dress if you need to be an extra in a movie that has an 80s prom scene and you want something that's not gonna be too focus pulling. I think it's cute. I don't really have anything mean to say. Hey, hey guys, hey cider. What's going on here? Ankle boots? You put this beautiful lady in this cute dress in ankle boots? Oh, cider. We were doing so well. Listen, I, I, this, this is the type of thing that really like devils my eggs. No, that sounds good. This like really like tangles my hair. It really upsets my pH, you know what I mean? This is the type of thing that really folds my contact lenses. You know, this is the kind of thing that, that purples my nurple, you know what I mean? I hate when I'm shopping online, especially for plus size clothing, and there is no thought given to how the garment that's being advertised is accessorized, because accessories can really elevate a piece of clothing. Accessories can help you envision an outfit. It can help you think about ways you can sub in things you already own. The random shoe choices for plus size clothing, it makes me so mad. It really greeks my yogurt. It really splits my ends. It really lemons my meringue. It really Boston creams my pie. <laughs> it really Boston's my, I'm not gonna say that. Like imagine how much this would eat with like opera gloves and updo with like two tendrils of hair hanging down. A necklace is fine, but maybe something with a pendant and just like pink ankle strap satin look pumps that match this pink on the shoulder. That'd be amazing. Cider, everyone give me a job and I will only demand a 75% discount. I think a lot of cider stuff is fine. Like I really have to dig to find stuff that's like genuinely bad to my own standards. Like even this peachy dress right here, like does it look like it's made out of thinly sliced deli ham? Yeah, but it's not a bad dress. Like the cut's fine. Like, this is a little cheesy looking, but I, I think it's cute. I love dinosaurs. My mom is a kindergarten teacher, or she was, she's not dead, she's just retired. And she loved teaching her kids about dinosaurs. And by extension, I learned a lot about dinosaurs as a kid too. And I had those Walking with Dinosaurs VHS tapes and also the sequel Walking with Prehistoric Beasts. And I loved them. Oh my God, I love them. Ooh. Oh my God. Oh gee whiz, is that what I think it is? I don't even have to ask, I know that's what I think it is. I know that this is a lettuce trim mesh cami dress with a print of Primavera by Botticelli on it. This is one of my favorite paintings ever, let's talk about it. Good morning America, let's load this page. My goals for 2023 include going on one date and this page loading, woo, it worked. Primavera is one of my favorite paintings ever. I think it's gorgeous, it reminds me of being a kid. It just feels very like storybook and imaginative. It makes me feel like I'm being taken somewhere else. It's very immersive. I went to go see it several times when I lived in Florence because it's at the Uffizi Gallery. It's in the same room with The Birth of Venus and several other Botticelli paintings, but this one always holds my attention the longest. It just makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. I think it is so beautiful. And here we are, a trap set for me. I feel like Bugs Bunny and Cider is Elmer Fudd putting a carrot underneath a box, waiting for me to follow it so he can pull the string and the box will fall on me and he can make rabbit soup out of my beautiful quivering ingenue body, but it won't work. My resolve is too strong. This is the kind of thing if cider had been around when I was in college that I would have immediately bought 22 bucks for a dress this pretty. 
please. Good Lord. I would already be wearing it, but I'm an adult now and I'm more in charge of my finances now because I have to be because my mom doesn't pay my rent anymore. <laughs> Closing the tab mode activated. This is the gray solid hooded corset hoodie. Gray solid hoodie woody pseudo woody hoodie allen hoodie corset hoodie horsed sooty horsey horsey hoodie horsey sourcey gray horsey warsey. Perfect. I don't want to make it seem like I don't understand the purpose of this garment. Like I don't understand what it's trying to do. Corset hoodie. Dry ice. Jumbo shrimp, brawling love, corset hoodie, the great oxymorons of the world. I get it. I love athleisure. I grew up in Boston. I went to high school in Boston in the heyday of the North Face jacket, Victoria's Secret pink yoga pants, Uggs daily uniform combo. I go to business school now. Do you know how much athleisure I see on a daily basis? Like, there's no way I'd get to the massive, astronomically big age of 28 and three quarters without developing at least an admiration for a curated casual look, matter of fact. In another life, I was known to sport an athletic half sip with thumb holes on the regular. So I don't begrudge the girls for wanting something cozy that also like turns heads, you know? But like corset hoodie, plunging neckline, like faux boning with the stitching. Like, <laughs> is there anything, like anything at all that we don't have to alter so we look as snatched as possible? There's nothing wrong with it. It's fine. I just, I'm like, I'm just kind of tired of like, a, like even a sweatshirt has a built-in corset. Even a sweatshirt has to be sexy. Even a sweatshirt has to be a, like a, a fit, you know what I mean? It's just like, can we have like a second? Can we just have like a second? You know what I mean? Just one brief moment. Or like, come in here. Hi, sweet girl. <laughs> Hi, sweetheart. Hi, sweetheart. Are you gonna help me finish the video? She's gonna help me finish the video. Wow, okay, so she immediately left which is pretty apt because the last section we're going to talk about today in this exploration through cider is a Valentine's Day collection, but more specifically an anti-Valentine's Day collection. This is the one that got away for the brokenhearted. A collection for anyone feeling brokenhearted or navigating their single era this Valentine's Day. So we have four different categories, or me, myself, and I, the perfect date every time. Thank you, next, DJ. Play No Scrubs, which we are going to explore. Revenge Era. Sorry, not sorry. Which I think is just like black and purple 2011 prom dress looking silhouettes. Bedroom secret. Looking hot for yourself. Uh, let's explore the thank you next section. <laughs> Ooh, how tantalizing. <laughs> These are the diamond tassels ripped denim shorts. Oh yeah, these are bad to look at. I love how freestanding these tassels are. So every time you shake your hips in the club, it's gonna sound like somebody's jingling keys around you. I love it. It's like you were walking through a country club and just yanking tennis bracelets off of rich lady's wrists. These little freestanding rhinestones, these look sharp as hell. There's no way she was able to just freely lift her arm back up after letting it laze casually against these shorts. They had to call in a, a, like a, like a neurosurgeon, I think, to undo this bond. I know they had to hire somebody who specializes in bomb disposal to undo this. This is essentially a landmine. I get it though. I think these are so on point with this theme because if you wear these shorts around year X, they're gonna be like, oh wow. I really did a number on that person psychologically. I need to work on myself. I might be a villain. What the hell is going on here? These are the hollow out tights. God, I don't want to make a trypophobia joke because it feels too obvious, but like for all the Suriname toads out here watching, these are your going out look done and dusted. I understand like the look of laddered ripped tights if you're going for something alternative or goth or, 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 or certain strains of Lolita fashion that might be appropriate. Or if you're Kesha in the music video for We Are Who We Are, a seminal classic. But these being like perfect round circles, as if there's another 
type of circle, bitch. Square circles. Anyway, they're like too clean to be distressed. They're just weird. Mold spore tights. I don't, I don't much care for these. When I was a freshman in college, I went to this sleazy dance right after spring break on campus, appropriately called sleazeball. What a great school Sarah Lawrence was. I don't regret going there at all. But the outfit that I wore, if I can find the courage in my soul to actually show you the terrible outfit I wore, I will, but I don't know if I will. I had, to, I had tights on over a pair of Target underwear with a bra, a leather jacket, and floral print Doc Martens. I thought my tights looked too clean, so I used my friend's keys to tear a bunch of holes in them, and I was like, wow, I've really grown up. This is so cool of me. Uh, and then I had like one singular shot of raspberry vodka and danced with no one for the entire night, but I still had fun. Um, I also wrote the cringiest Tumblr post ever then morning after my night. If I can find that too, I will read that. Baby doll collar crop, baby crop, baby, baby dollop, baby doll crawler, crock crawler, crock pot, baby doll, oh my God. Baby doll collared crop blob, baby doll blob, baby doll collar. You know what, fuck it, I don't care. It's ugly. <laughs> Low waist drawstring joggers? It's trying to give Manny Santos wearing a thong to school in Degrassi, and instead it just kind of looks like your pants are broken in a weird way. Like the internal elastic is detaching from the rest of the pants. Personally ever find myself wanting pants that look like they're in the process of falling down all the time, but you know, not everything is made for me. In fact, as you'll find, very few things are including many things that I own. What is this made of? I like, cannot place this fabric. This looks like alien snake skin. 78% rayon, 22% polyamide? Oh, nylon. Amide groups have the general chemical formula C-O-N-H. C-O-N-H? Concord, New Hampshire? Oh God, no. Nothing New Hampshire related is allowed in my wardrobe. New Hampshire is a godless place. They have no laws there. You can, you can set off fireworks that you bought from under an overpass to celebrate your marriage to your Alaskan Malamute. I'm from Massachusetts. People from Massachusetts walk in the in the light of God. And, and, I, and I've always said that. When I say that I'm from Massachusetts by the glory and grace of God, I'm not just making a joke. He told me. <laughs> Everyone from Massachusetts is getting into heaven, except for Tom Brady. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He's from California. I knew I didn't like him for a reason. These New Hampshire pants, I rebuke these. I absolutely can't look at them any longer. These are the pants of the devil. Okay, we're gonna cut it right here, you guys. Tell me where else you want me to window shop and I might get around to it within the next 10 or 15 years or so. If you'd like to follow me on websites where I'm more active, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, or TikTok at Nisi Pisa. And I will see you in the next one. I forget the rest of my outro and I've been filming for four hours. So I'm gonna go, bye. <laughs> Good news, guys. I found the post from my Tumblr about that dance. Yo, tonight I sashayed out in my docks, fancy panties, ripped tights, and a bra, and shook my jiggly bits around everyone I know, and danced up on some seriously chill individuals, and rode a tidal wave of raspberry vodka, and none of that was a dream. Was tonight sleazy? Yes, indeed. Well, it's over. I'm gonna, um, I think I'm gonna walk into the ocean now. Or, um, bye.